So this next question is a manufacturing question mm -hmm. because you know I know that uh, you have hunted terpenes and done big sifts your whole life, and you know the value of a really good terpene, right? Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to extraction, you know almost all of us lean towards really clean whole plant cannabis extractions to get our terps. But if you're making edibles and you want to add some terpenes to that, the price point doesn't uh, make sense to do uh, cannabis extracted all the time. Right. And so, so you've got different levels of terpene, both uh, extraction processes and whether or not they're cannabis sourced or whether or not they're, they're food sourced. And, and, and a lot of folks get confused. You know, they'll just bash one or the other without um, understanding that when you are trying to design a product uh, to bring it to the mass market, you know, it, it can't just be cool. It has to work on the spreadsheet as well. Mm -hmm. So when you are helping your clients think through what level and what source of terpene to choose, you know, how do you help them think through that challenge? You, when it comes to that, that's just pure business. Because once we start to say we're gonna go from whole plant, full extract, to where we're gonna do crude, distillate, added terps, it becomes how much what's the price point of the product that's going to get sold downstream and we have to go all the way backwards through the chain to figure out what do you have to sell it for in order to be profitable and with with these questions before we're always done with like don't anybody talk about the dirty product we're gonna put in right but now with testing no matter what it has to be clean and so I don't have any issue with with plant derived terps because fundamentally for me people people that have little money shouldn't be precluded from using cannabis and so if all they can afford is bulk cannabis that was cleanly extracted, and then someone like Ben from Two Terpenes, who does some really nice work, who's, who's about it, he lays you out a floral pattern that is rich, and you consume it, and you go, well, that's beautiful. And it's way more affordable than steam distilled terps that you derived, or you did closed loop, and you pulled them off and put them back in. If you, that's not your price point, that's not your price point. But if your price point is that, and that's what you're selling, then that's what you focus on. And I think that the, the fight you hear so much is because each individual believes that their system is what works best for them, and it does. But it doesn't, it doesn't diminish either or. They're two radically different worlds. And you just have to understand why you're doing it. And what's the end goal, and what is the price that it's gonna sell for. And when you, when you look at it like that, it becomes a, a question you ask your accountant. So you sit down with your accountant. What kind of terps can I afford? What can I afford? <laughs> and what is my real margin on the sale? And when it starts to become too low to be profitable, you know that you can't do that. That's just an emotional response. That's something you would do for yourself privately for your own stash. But you definitely can't sell it like that. And so I don't see any issue with any of the different formulations because really what it does, it allows you to deal with the reality of income. That you have people who make very little, who are in pain and could use uh, homeopathic pain relief. They have uh, psychological issues, either depression or anxiety, and they can use certain forms of cannabis to either increase or decrease these things. Why should they be precluded from consuming when they can't afford the greatest farm-grown product ever done? That's just not fair. The supermarket has food for all people. I think cannabis has always historically been for all people. And so with the advent of technology, it allows you to be able to drop the cost of production dramatically. Well, that doesn't mean that, that it, it, it changes everyone's reality, but it allows you to cover a large spectrum of the, of the lower cost portions. I don't, and, and, and as we go forward, there is a difference. No derived package is as complete as the natural package. And I just know this from, as a consumer that I play with all of them and I don't care which one I play with. If that isn't pulled off directly from the, from the varietal, because the terps and the cannabinoids, this is a union. You, you're, you're trying to take something apart, you're trying to deconstruct something and then say, look, this is the important part, the rest of it wasn't there. And the reality is it's a synthesis. It's a, it's a homogenous mix. The plant created all these things in some form for some reason. It has it in its genealogical background to produce these things. How do they interrelate? We're not smart enough to know yet. And when we start to think with that smart, we already know we're going the wrong way because this is too complex a uh, molecular equation. So you have to just say, for whatever reason, for reasons unknown, these things seem to be best in this form and that's the people who can discern that and afford it. And when the education is present, then people will know, look, there's a reason why we pay a higher price for this because of the subtleties. But for people who don't have the money, I don't see anything wrong with uh, crude that's been cleaned and, and derived terps that have been applied 
just don't apply them so heavy you're creating a solvent. That my, my problem with adding terps back into mixes is that they're going so heavy with the terps to create this unbelievably terp experience that people forget that it's a solvent, especially limony. And so you're adding all this citrus into your product to get this incredible monoterpene, explosive, grabbing, hungry, I want more, but we don't know what it does to the lungs. And so you want to make sure that you're really trying to keep it within some range and balance that's been here because we've had so little medical damage done to people using from cannabis use that I believe, and I talked to Ben, the same thing, we both believe that as they start to turn these dials, we'll see changes in how people are affected by it, and both in cannabinoid levels, which are unusually high, and in terpenoid levels that are unusually high. And so we, we don't really have any R&D on that. We're the guinea pigs, and we'll know as we go forward but to me, it, it is, as long as you turn those back to realistic so that you're not trying to make someone believe, hey, my manufactured product that's accentuated is definitely better than the real product because the numbers are higher. They may be, but they're radically different in subtlety and experience and experience of the smoker will determine it and money will allow you to make those fine choices. It's like the difference between a really high-end whiskey and a low-end whiskey. They're both whiskey. You drink a bottle of it, you're gonna know you drank a bottle of whiskey. One of them is absolutely alive in the mouth, and the other one is a little less so. Who can afford the qualities? And they'll be the same here. Yeah, right on. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome.